So this first question from Stefan Nielsen. Hi Rufus, what's the biggest difference between American and Danish students in your opinion? Best wishes, Stefan from IT. Stefan, honestly, so it is, this is something that I'm really, really struck by every, in every, uh, everywhere I go when I talk to students. So tonight I'm gonna to be speaking largely to Danish students. Last night, actually, I was speaking to American students. What is amazing to me is that actually um, the differences are almost non-existent. That I think, you know, in this increasingly global world, that um, young people are so interconnected in a way that they haven't been um, since really the beginning of time. Uh, that it, it, I don't, I really, really don't see a difference. And I was talking about this after I did the event last night with American students. What I thought, the, how I thought the questions might be different. And of course, there are slightly slight difference because you know I don't get as many questions about you know, Danish food or say asking me to speak the language and things like that. But ultimately, I think where people's heads are, where, where, where people's priorities are, I really think they're very, very similar, um, which has been something that I didn't necessarily anticipate that. But I really think the Danish and American students are quite similar. All right, next question. Thank you. This is a fun one um, from Marcus Christian Hansen. Sorry, I should show it first. <laughs> yeah, just keep yeah. going. That's, that's, there that's great. There he is. Marcus Christian Hansen, what are your plans uh, for the future when Donald Trump wins the presidency? <laughs> Marcus, from the history of ideas. Oh, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus. Um, I don't. Uh, I. 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 I uh, I don't consider that at the moment is, is, is the truth. Um, it is a fascinating, well, I'll just say this, uh, it is a fascinating time in American politics. There is no doubt about that. I think if anyone would have, would have said uh, a year ago that on the Republican side, the leading, the person who's leading the polls was Donald Trump. And on the Democratic side, you know, there's a real rivalry between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. I don't think anyone would have believed you. Um, now, what do I, do I believe that Donald Trump will be president? Personally, I do not believe that Donald Trump will be, pre will be president, but you know, it, 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 he has certainly tapped into some, uh, to, to, to a certain degree of interest on, on the Republican side. So we'll see how it plays out. We will see how it plays out. Okay. Next question. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Frederick Hagerup. <clears throat> Here we go. I'll show it first. Yeah. Okay. Hi Rufus, and I'm Frederick, and I'm study and I study law. What is your take on being assigned to Denmark? It's likely that Obama sent you to Denmark due to the open-mindedness here. But would you have preferred another less open-minded country? That way, you could possibly have a greater influence on acceptance of different sexual orientations, for instance. You know, it's I don't. I mean, the, the answer to the question is I would have been thrilled to go serve wherever ever the president wanted me to serve. Um, I did discuss Denmark with him and it did feel like a great fit for me. I don't think it was necessarily about the open-mindedness as much as it was about the variety of issues that I was interested in um, that we got to work on here. But I think as far as serving in another country where I could make more of a positive impact or I could you know, teach people who are less familiar with different sexual orientations about my own, I mean, that is an interesting concept. And I think were I, were I serving in another country, were I serving in Eastern Europe or the Middle East. I mean, it would be a very, it would be a different job in that sense. Um, and I would, you know, there would have to be sort of a basic level of education, I think, about, about sexuality, whereas you don't have that initial conversation with Danes in the same way. Um, but I, I really, I have to say, I am very, very grateful for being here every day. I never, never wish uh, that I am, that, that I was asked to serve anywhere else. I, I feel like Denmark and Denmark and Rufus are a, a very good fit and I'm, and I'm real happy about that. Um, next question, Amanda Garibaldi Anderson. Here we go. Dear Mr. Gifford, for the past few months, we've seen a massive increase in the number of refugees from the Middle East and Europe. What political action do you think the global society, and especially America, should take? Kind regards, Amanda, third semester political science. It's obviously an incredibly, incredibly important question and something that I think the world community is now faced with. So I think there's two ways to answer this question. There's kind of the European answer, and then there's the global community uh, answer, which is the United States is, of course, part of. So 
um, was speaking about the American, the, the American experience on this uh, first, because it's in some ways a little bit easier. And we're, we're having our own internal debate about what our role in helping solve this crisis is. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're spending money, of course, on aid. Uh, I think we've spent $4.1 billion on aid in Syria. Um, we're agreeing to take more Syrian uh, refugees than we have ever before. But I think there's still a very, very robust political debate domestically in the United States about whether we can and should do more. Um, and I think there, and I, and I think that is, you know, with the facts changing on the ground almost by the day, um, you, you, you don't exactly know how things are going to evolve, but it's certainly, certainly passionate right now. And as far as the global community is concerned, and I really do think that, you know, this is a time um, for Europe to come together. This is a time for European countries to really show political leadership. What we want to see, certainly what I want to see is um, uh, with, as this crisis threatens to splinter Europe, I would like to see Europe come together and really come up with a, a, with a unified political solution. Because of course, we haven't seen a crisis like this here since the end of World War II. And um, look, we've seen Europe solve global problems before, and we have every, every, every reason to believe that Europe can do it again. But I think it's gonna take some really tough work and some, and some real strong political leadership and compromise and, 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 and working across you know, political aisles and things along those lines. But it is a unified global effort that we're going to have to, uh, that, that we're gonna to have to work out. And also that, look, and I don't wanna discount the fact that we need to work on the root of the problem, which is coming from, coming in the Middle East, meaning that we as the global community need to do more in Iraq and do more in Syria. Um, in order to actually stabilize those incredibly difficult situations. Thank you all so much for your questions on Facebook.